<laughs> wow. Um, 32 millimeters of movement bridged. Membrane this structure still has failed already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the building's fallen down, but yes. the membrane's still intact. So, um. Hello, everyone. Today I'm continuing my quest for what good looks like in construction industry. And I'm at the Ozone offices here in Ozel. We're gonna be having a look at one of their products and talking about how they've contributed this innovation to the market. Before we do that, I gotta show you this view from out the front of their offices here. We're directly under Anzac Bridge here in Sydney and uh, it's pretty cool. So to that effect, I'd like to introduce you all to Dr. Nassim Gosney. And Hi, everyone. <laughs> thanks for having us here today. Yeah, pleasure. Thanks. Um, and just a quick preview of our sample. We'll get back to this a bit more later. So let's start by telling, uh, telling everyone, telling me a little yeah. bit more about yourself and uh, your experience in the industry so yeah, far. Sure. Well, hello, everyone. I'm Nassim. And uh, well, I've been in this industry for the back like, for I think about 18, 19 years now. I feel old. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I'm, a, a, I'm a structural engineer, but I've always been uh, working in the construction sites as well. And I've been doing a lot of inspections, investigations, asset management, and all of those things. And m more than that, I'm very much interested in the research part of the industry as well, mm. and innovation. And I think it's, a, it's an integral part of what we do because we want, like, the industry is live and we want to always move forward, come up with new things that will help the industry. The thing that prompted this, you know, meeting of, of us today and this, this discussion and, and looking at this product was a conversation that we're having about innovation and new technologies and that very much aligns with what I want to achieve this year is talking about what good looks like and good is something that's subjective and it's always changing and there's always new challenges. And so innovation's a massive part of that. What was it that prompted you to get into waterproofing and, and waterproofing products specifically because you have had a pretty broad um, yeah. experience in construction? Yeah, so uh, what happens is that you used to do a lot of building inspections, not necessarily for waterproofing, like dilapidation reports and for the structural integrity of the, of the buildings and one of the things that always came up was the was the waterproofing and leaks in the buildings you know we've always been thinking about like new methodologies with any anything with any project that we take on it always we try to have a touch of you know something new so now to get into the product we're actually going to be talking about today and that is the water stop uh product so Masim, can you tell us a little bit more? We've got a nice sample of it here. Yep. What is this pro? Well, it's a waterproofing sheet membrane. So it's called water stop. And it's a it's a four layer membrane. It's 0 0.557 millimeters. And it's suitable for both internal and external applications. So it's compliant with both uh, Australian standards for internal and external applications. Very good. So normally with any uh, waterproofing system, there's the primary membrane, but then there also might be some accessories like primers and sealants and that sort of thing. What are the accessories that go with this product? So with this one, you don't necessarily need a, a, a primer, but what we'd need is that anything that you would have already on a job site. So it will be the toilet adhesive, a measuring tape, very important, I yep. would say. <laughs> You'll need a troweler, uh, a polyurethane sealant, and um, yeah, pretty okay. much it. Okay, cool. Yeah. And before we start talking about the details and whatnot of, of the system, um, I'm interested to know what skill set you think is valuable to someone that will be installing this product. And, and I say this from the perspective of liquid applied membranes might be most similar to a painter's skill set, yeah. whereas sheet applied membranes might be more suitable to a, a, a chippy carpenter that does a lot of measuring and cutting, yeah. that sort of thing. Well, the very, very first thing is this waterproofing certificate. So that's, yeah, it's, <laughs> that's it very important. Yes. That's a waterproofer. That's good call. So that's non-negotiable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's first. And pretty much what you'll need is that you need precision and you need to be able to pay attention to details. Let's just talk about what the buildup of this product looks like mm -hmm. um, on a typical typical um, substrate, right? So let's oh, okay. say a typical bathroom, you might have a reinforced concrete on the floor. 
Uh, well, if it's a straightforward sort of a substrate, what you would need is that first of all, clean the, the substrate, make yep. sure there are no debris, I mean like no, uh, no extra bits and pieces on the, on the substrate. Yep. With this one, especially because the adhesion is, is with tile adhesive, so if you've got a little bit of damp, it sometimes is better because mm. then there is a better uh, the adhesion. The moisture between, actually helps yeah. the tile adhesive. Yes, getting. you don't want it to be on a puddle, so that's for sure. Yep. But if it's a bit damp, it's, it's even better. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Excellent. So that's typical installation. You you have your substrate, then yeah. you use the tile adhesive to get a direct bond. Yeah. Um, and then more or less, if we're talking about walls here, you can then go and direct apply yeah, your exactly. tile so, with adhesive yeah, yeah, straight yeah, to exactly. the membrane. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Now, obviously, the the membrane comes in um, a pre-made roll of, yeah. of sorts. So when it's installed, it's cut and measured and, and put in place. Yeah. What do we do on the overlaps? How are those actually detailed to make sure it's watertight mm. as well? So with the overlaps, uh, according to the Australian standards, that so this is important, what we need to do is that the overlaps need to be treated with a waterproofing uh, material. Yep. So we can't just use tile adhesive. So what you would do is that you, you would use a, 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 poly, a polyurethane sealant, for example, uh, for the joints. I am interested on how to detail a sheet system like this, a little bit more tricky than a liquid applied when you have penetration and stuff like that. Mm. How does the, the water stop system handle that? Uh, so we have pre-made systems, like pre-made accessories that will actually, that can be used. But if a project team wants to, uh, you know, explore other options, we're happy to work with them to just see what we can do to, yeah. Uh, now, this is a, a very important one. When I uh, first started out in waterproofing, solvent-based, uh, oil-based, we used to call them back in the day, polyurethanes mm. were very popular. Their one big problem is that things don't stick to them very well. Oh, yeah. um, how does your product handle direct bonding issues? Well, it's a, it's a fully bonded uh, membrane. Yep. So and the, the bond is mechanical bond, so it's not chemical bond. So there is not going to be any damage to the waterproofing membrane. Yep. This is very important. Yep. And uh, pretty much the mechanical bond is the two outside layers yep. that uh, yeah they will create that adhesion, but it's mechanical adhesion. Excellent. So yeah. I, I can sort of see and feel there's like a texture in it. So yep. um, it's that texture fabric that the tile adhesive actually bonds into bonds mechanically. Into. Yeah, I yeah. personally like the sound of that because not being a chemist i think chemistry can be a little bit black magic sometimes in that yes. it will make sense yeah. short term you can do a prototype on site everything bonds very well but then three years five years seven years later you're having things occur like plasticizer migration and yes. whatnot yeah, yeah. and that adhesion gets undone tiles are falling off the wall drummy True. build ups in your floor and whatnot yeah. i definitely see that to be a problem yeah and and the, the other thing that I, I i you know i like about this is that when you when you use a chem, a chemical adhesion or other types of adhesion the problem is while you're doing that you may overdo and you may damage the membrane yeah. and you for waterproofing you will just need one small hole yeah so to create a disaster we're here today, we're talking about new products from a waterproofing perspective, but the whole industry keeps moving forward as well, right? There's new structural technologies, there's new everything. Mm -hmm. So we don't only have to be thinking, how does the waterproofing perform, mm -hmm. but how does it perform in relation to other building elements? And I say this from the perspective of CLT becoming a, mm. a lot more popular at the moment. I think there's a little bit of more room for potential life cycle movement via mm -hmm swelling and, and other mechanisms that might occur there that might be a risk to the, the waterproofing membrane. So yep. on that note, how does this product in particular handle um, structural movement that might occur? Um, very good question. <laughs> First of all, the tensile strength is, is very high. The tensile strength of a liquid membrane, generally speaking, mm. uh, is, is around, let's say, maximum two, three MPA. Yep. Whereas with this one, we can go up to eight, nine MPA, which four times more than an actual waterproofing liquid membrane. And then the other thing is that it's a, it's a, it's a flexible material. So what happens is that before it actually starts to yield or starts to get into a point that it's going to stretch, it will start like going through that cycle of, of tension, which the tensile strain actually will come in. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think strains a, a bit of a much. key word there. Um, yeah. No, no, I, I, I like it. And it, it goes to show that there's a lot more in worrying about movement accommodation than people think, right? Mm. Um, if when I speak to our audience here and say, if you're the type of person that's asking only, what's the percentage of elongation? That's all you're thinking about. It's not enough. You're not factoring in how things actually work because if no one's told you, a million percent elongation over zero millimeters is still zero movement accommodation. Yeah. So it's gonna fail at that. So that's why I'm happy that you mentioned tensile strength is because that forms a, a big part of it. It's yeah. how much can it hold its own. And I think we're gonna do a bit of a, an experiment and show some, yes. um, some yeah, demos yeah, on yeah. that. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. So look at how this product can be applied in a way that's useful to the market. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll take it back to, to basic principles here. The three tenants are cost, speed and quality. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah. So let's just focus on uh, speed at the moment because uh, we haven't talked about that yet. Compared to say a traditional liquid system that has multiple layers and whatnot, mm -hmm. what's your installation time? Half a day. Half a day. Yeah. Tyler can be in there in the afternoon if you're in there or I'm in there in the morning doing the waterproofing. Yes, yep, yeah, yeah. If you start in the morning, like by noon you should be you should be finished. Yeah. 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 Depending on how many uh, uh, breaks you'll get. But yeah. <laughs> if you work straight, you'll finish. Gotcha. Well, yeah. I think we can uh, agree that compared to the traditional priming, curing, first layer cure, second layer cure, then let it dry properly before you can do any quality control yeah, checks yeah. on it. If you can get it done faster, then the project will be finished sooner. Yeah, you're right. So if we've, in that way, we've actually just solved for all of the three principles, we've got it done quickly, yep. which means we've saved time on our construction program. Our interest isn't racking up on our construction <laughs> loans. <laughs> yeah. And uh, also from a quality perspective, if you can walk in, have the area completely yours for half a day, yep. get it completely done, hand it over the tiler, it again gets covered. It's not then, exposed to potential yes, damage exactly. and, and, and construction stage yeah, issues, yeah, right? Yeah. We touched on something earlier, which I thought was quite in interesting. Um, that potentially the, the best installers of these type of sheet products are wallpaper installers. Yes, yes. I think they can be very, very good installers <laughs> because they pay attention to the details. Yep. If, if it looks good, there is a higher chance that it it's actually performs well as well. So. <laughs> so there you go. Any of the retro wallpaper installers from the 70s and 80s that have been out of work for the last 30 years, Get you're needed. We need you in waterproofing now. <laughs> Now we're looking at the test that we talked about before. We're going to see how um, our water stop product accommodates cracking and movement. And we've got a nice little experiment here where we're going to simulate different degrees of cracking on this product. Yeah. So tell us what we've got here with this sample um, and how we're going to use it. Yeah, sure. So what we've done is that we simulated uh, um, an installation. So we've got this substrate, can be a typical substrate. Substrate here we've used AAC. And uh, so we've got the tile adhesive and then the membrane's gone on top. So now we've got an installed membrane ready to be able to simulate a crack. Excellent. Yep. So the, the AAC, also known as um, Hebel most commonly, um, yep. we've got two pieces of it. We've got some uh, little spaces that we're going to use to yeah. simulate an ever-increasing crack. Crack, right? yes. Okay. So if we've got a, a few here, so yeah. maybe we can start incrementally. Well, yeah, that's it. So, so first of all, we've got this ruler here that's about yeah. a, a millimeter thickness. So um, probably, yeah. let me help out. I'll lift up this side of it. Go in. Yep. And we've got it. So we're going to close that back down there. Now we've got a, a millimeter space yep. um, in there between our two structural elements here. And we can see that that's bridging that just, just fine, oh, yeah. really. So Nothing. we're going to... Uh, keep incrementally increasing. increasing this, stress it out, try and find what happens as we near or reach the failure point. Yeah, yeah, um, exactly. Okay, so, so we'll call that one a success. Yep, Let's so see what else we've we got this do. one, which is, this is a three millimeter. Excellent, that's a three yeah. millimeter, uh, yeah. like a window packer. Okay, cool, now I can see this is getting a little bit tighter here. Yep. That's a bit tight, okay, but our membrane still seems to be intact, so that yep. right there is easily bridging a um, a three millimeter joint spacing. So, and keeping in mind when this was applied, there was practically zero. So we've gone from zero to three and there's pretty much no 
no, it's no discernible yeah. change in the in the product here on the top or or in its adhesion. Yep. So let's pull that now one up again. We'll swap one. it out. Yep. So this one's a five mil. I'll go this direction. I'll go a bit higher as well. Yep. We've we'll got it right in there. Yep. Okay. 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 Now let's lower that down nice. We're going to push it down and really get that yep. spread. Okay. So we've now we've now got the five millimeter spacer. So we've taken this from zero millimeter joint at, at uh, installation time to five millimeter. I did hear a, a small amount of um, of not tearing but debonding occurring. And, and to be honest, that's exactly what I'm expecting to happen here. Mm -hmm. Is that we have a, a product with a very high tensile strength. Is that it's going to hold itself together. And instead of wanting to elongate or crack, it might debond a little bit from the strub straight and move. Yeah. And you can, if you can see a little bit of a, a ripple here, yeah. it's because you can see that's where this membrane has uh, has debonded here where this ripple's occurring. Um, and that's exactly as intended. And just as a bit of a history lesson, that's where the term bond breaker comes from for your mm -hmm. corner fillets. They were intended to break the bond to allow the membrane to move. And that's exactly what's happening. So. Let's go. Let's go. So this one's 10 mil. Oops. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's put it back down. Okay. You want to push down on that side? Yeah. Oh. Excellent. Well, that, that oh. handled that quite well. I, yeah. uh, I think we need something bigger. Big. So we're back. <laughs> we're back. We had to find yeah. some bigger things to, to try and make our membrane fail here. We're having a bit of a hard time. So yeah. Um, we now have a bit of 22 millimeter, I believe, uh, PVC electrical conduit. Mm. Let's see how it handles it. Yep. Right. Okay, we're gonna stick it all the way through. Nice yeah. and even there. Okay. Yeah. And we're gonna push down on the market. This is what exactly what I wanted to, to see is that we've had it debond all the way back to here and all the way back to here, you can see this little curve there. So we've just taken out our 22 millimeter PVC conduit and put this back in place. So that's what that simulated is that we've had 22 millimeters of movement between our two structural elements here, and then it's closed back up. And you can see there is a little bit of rippling here from our debonded membrane, but still completely intact. And this is a great win for the reason that a lot of other membranes that are so well bonded to the substrate that instead of uh, moving and accommodating the structural movement, they will just instead immediately snap. Right. So mm. personally, this is the reason why I have a lot of confidence in sheet products of this type when you're applying it over a substrate that you are a little bit uncertain on. Is there going to be any sort of movement? Is it swelling? Is it, you know, cracking a any type of movement that the membrane might be expected to accommodate? Only one question remains. Can we do any more? Oh, yeah, we've got something <laughs> what have we got here. So this one's a 30, around 32 mil. Excellent. So 32 millimeters, we're turning it up another 10. Let's try it. Okay. Ooh. Okay. This is going to be a tough one. Yeah. Okay. okay. Wow. Um, 32 millimeters of movement bridged. Membrane the structure still has failed already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the building's fallen down, but yeah. the membrane's still intact. So um, that is consumer confidence. Uh, so yeah, look, this is really good. You can see the membrane stretching oh, a little bit here, yeah. um, you know, where it becomes a little bit narrower, but still definitely, uh, definitely holding together. That's, it's actually very elastic there. You can, can see that's fully the membrane holding the structure together at this point. Uh, okay. Well, <laughs> so let's, let's take this, it. this yeah. out of here. And now, yeah, we can see that that's back to zero and everything's still intact. So I consider this a good outcome. Are you happy that this is a yeah. representation of what your product's yes. capable of? Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, even if the structure fails, the waterproofing is still there. So that's the goal. Being an innovator in any industry isn't something that's easy to do. It takes a lot of investment of time and cost before you see any return. And that's why I think it's such an admirable achievement and encourage more people to contribute. So that's a wrap for today, guys. Um, Big thanks to Nassim and also Maz behind the scenes helping us out. Um, really appreciate the insights into this technology and I uh, hope you did too. Thanks. <laughs>